Houston was in recovery mode Friday morning after a storm system battered the area overnight, smashing windows and toppling trees before it is set to wreak more havoc in the southeast. Houston woke up to scenes of destruction on after severe storms with winds of up to 100 miles per hour, spewed debris across roads, and littered the ground downtown with broken glass. Houston Mayor John Whitmire said four people perished in the storm, and authorities were investigating unconfirmed reports of a fifth casualty. Authorities urged residents to continue to stay home amid the dangerous road conditions. Widespread power outages have also knocked out traffic lights across the city, posing traffic control hazards for morning commuters. Officials were also concerned about the dangers of broken glass on roadways. Downtown is a mess. It's dangerous due to the glass and the lack of traffic lights, he said so stay at home. Authorities also warned residents to keep off the roads. It's hard to see as you're driving, he said. He said the majority of emergency calls to the fire department were to report downed wires and gas leaks. If you're smelling gas inside your home, it could be potentially hazardous. More than 900 customers of the utility company Centerpoint Energy have lost their power, he said. Power restoration would take up to 48 hours for some residents. The company said on X that restoring full power would be a days-long restoration effort, with cloudy skies and a few showers expected in the afternoon, according to the weather. All right, this is the book of 2nd Ezra, chapter 15, verse 18. It says, for because of their pride, the cities shall be, the, shall be troubled, the houses shall be destroyed, and men shall be afraid. I want to give all honor, all glory, and all praise unto Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem Rakakwadash, Double honors to the elders of the nation of Israel. Shalom to you brothers out there that are laboring, enduring the elements, making your body a living sacrifice, trying to seal the elect, making your carnal election sure, seeking out your own salvation, as well as your sisters that are learning, listening, applying, being obedient to your husbands. Shalom, shalom. Again, it's the brother Zachariah coming back to you with another highways and hedges and the chief place of concourse as commanded. Okay, and Lord willing, this uh, highways and hedges uh, lesson will be edifying unto you. You know, I prepare all my highways and hedges as lessons. Okay, because you know, sometimes we'll be out here and no one will approach you and inquire what, you, what you're doing. Some might just be curious, ask a quick question and then go. You know, some might stop, you know, and if they do, then hey, I'm gonna be here for them. You know, answer whatever questions they may have. But uh, I'm gonna treat this as a lesson because there's people that tune in to your highways and hedges on YouTube, so I, I set it up as lessons, all right? So with that, you know, as you see the video clip in the beginning, there's a, there was a major storm that hit, uh, Thursday uh, in Houston, all right? And uh, I decided to make this into a Highways and Hedges lesson because there's a lot of precepts that come to mind, some of the things that happen there, and it, it could be an omen for what's coming here to Babylon, okay? Not just, you know, what Houston is gonna be the only place that it, it endure that, okay? Many other places throughout, Bab or Babylon in, 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 as a whole, all right? And when I say Babylon, I'm talking about this place, you know, AKA America, all right? This is Babylon did great, all right? And the Heavenly Father is uh, has his eyes set on this place, okay? So, you know, I'm going to uh, elaborate a little bit on that. And like, again, Lord willing, this be edifying unto you, all right? So, again, I started with 2nd Ezra 15 and 18. I'll read it again. It says, for because of their pride, because that's what this place pushes, uh, a whole level of pride, you know, whether it's that pride month they have, the, uh, the, the, uh, the proud, the Marines, the Army pride, uh, American pride. Hey, that's the, the vibration uh, that of Esau Edom, okay? You know, uh, our oppressor, all right? The one who's, who's ruling the earth right now, you know, going into the book of uh, Malachi, uh, Malachi uh, you know, first chapter, fourth verse, you know? These people are the border of wickedness. You know, the earth has been given into them, into their hands, the hands of the wicked, Job 9, 24, all right? You know, 2nd Ezra 6 and 9, for Esau is the end of the world, and Jacob is the beginning of it that followeth, okay? So Esau will be the end of the world, and we are in the end times, whether you want to believe that or not, all right? So with that being said, and the way that he's going to go out, it's not, it's not going to be like, okay, the Lord come down here and say, hey, your time is up, time to hand it over to Jacob, and he just says, okay. No, nah, this devil's not doing that. If anything, he's searching out ways to try to prolong his, uh, his rule. You know, he wants to offset prophecy, okay? And he's doing it in a deceitful way, you know, to where people don't know what this man's doing, okay? But we see what this man's doing. Even if we're not there, like, right beside him looking like that, but we know through the Spirit, man, because the Scriptures tell you about this man, 
you know, and how he's moving, all right? So, you know, and, and plus the Heavenly Father is uh, exposing him, all right? So uh, with that, you know, I got another precept in the book of 2nd Ezra, which I actually, it seems like I got a bunch of precepts coming out of 2nd Ezra, all right? But uh, I also got uh, one in 2nd uh, Ezra, the ninth chapter, all right? And we'll just do this. Yeah, because I'll just pull up the whole thing. You know, there's a few verses I want to read. All right, this is 2nd Ezra 9, and I'm going to start at verse 1, and it says, He answered me then and said, Measure thou the time diligently in itself. And when thou seest part of the signs past, which I have told thee before, okay? See, the Heavenly Father told us before about these things, okay? Then shalt thou uh, understand that it is the very same time wherein the highest, the highest is going into uh, the Most High, Yahweh. Okay, his name is Yahweh, the Most High God, all right? All right, so I'll read it again. Then shalt thou uh, understand that it is the very same time wherein the highest will begin to visit the world which he made, okay? And he could, he's visiting this world by way of storms, uh, natural disasters, uh, famine, war, pestilences, you name it. All, all the, the whole nine, okay? So, you know, when you, when you see these things and you hear about these things, best believe it's, it's the uh, doings of the Heavenly Father, all right? visiting this place all right verse three therefore when there shall be seen earthquakes okay and upwards of the people in the world you see that all right verse four then shalt thou well understand that the most high spake of these things uh from the days uh that were before thee even from the beginning all right so the heavenly father spoke about these things and said these things are going to take place because this right here is his movie this is his movie uh you know and uh you know there's nothing you know nobody can do about it even though this devil is trying to offset prophecy he can't you know the bible tells you that his word the words of yahweh will not come back to him void all right whatever he says happen is going to it's going to come out that way okay but this devil is is, is resisting because he's adverse to the ways of the heavenly father all right and see this man knows that we got next so he's trying to uh prolong his rule but he's not going to be able to upset prophecy all right so we're going to go ahead and dive into uh, an article. All right. So just give me a second to get it pulled up. All right. All right. This is the first article. And I'm just going to Fox Weather. And it says Houston Metro rocked by uh, 100 miles per hour derecho. All right. That left seven dead and over 1 million without power all right so they got hit with a really bad storm uh, uh and it was all uh, thursday i believe all right all right and for y'all that don't know uh derecho uh it says a derecho is a widespread long-lived straight uh line windstorm that is associated with a fast-moving group of severe thunderstorms okay known as a mesoscale convective system all right so this is pretty much what, what uh, they, they got hit with. And uh, there was a video clip, man, where they, uh, this one Jake, uh, or I, I, it might have been an idiot, man, I don't know. They really didn't show who the person was, but uh, they had a video and they basically were showing how the storm just came in like quick, quick. I mean, it was like one second it was looking like, you know, it had the sky was looking a certain way. The next thing you know, it just got really dark, man. And that's heavy, all right? Bro, he's getting dark. Bro, you can't see it on no, camera, but it's no getting dark. Oh, he's coming right under us, bro. I mean, right over us. Holy! Oh, man, y'all pray for me, okay? It's about to go. Oh, yeah, we about to get We about to get wild. Oh, that shit coming in quick. Look at my dad. 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 All right. This is the book of Amos, the fifth chapter, and I'm gonna start at the 18th verse, and it says, Woe unto the woe unto you that desire the day of the Lord. To what end is it for you? The day of the Lord is darkness. See how dark it got in there? You know, it just made me think of this precept. Alright. I'll, I'll start up from the uh topic again. It says, Woe unto you that desire the day of the Lord. Okay, to what end is it for you? The day of the Lord is darkness and not light. As if a man did flee from a lion and a bear met him, or went into a, a went to the house and leaned his hand on the wall and a serpent bit him 
okay? Verse 20 says, shall not the day of the Lord be darkness, all right, and, and not light, even very dark and no brightness in it. So that, that's, that's heavy, you know, just seeing that. I'm like, man, hey, the Heavenly Father is not playing, man, you know? And, and there's so much more I'm going to get ready to bring out, y'all, just showing you, like, the stuff. And, and, you know, I got family in Texas, you know, that, uh, they're not in the Houston area, but I believe, you know, uh, they're around, like, San Antonio uh, and, like, neighboring cities around about there. But they, they all went down there. They're originally from up here, you know. You know, but they, they moved down that way, and, and they've been down there ever since. They were trying to get me to move down there some years back. You know, they're telling me, hey, man, you start a better life out here but you know and that was before the truth of course but my mindset now is like hey i'm here for a reason the heavenly father's got me here at this particular spot and i'm i'm gonna stick here you know especially now that i came into this truth all right so i, I ain't going nowhere but yeah man that darkness man that was a trip seeing that okay so it says a storm system spawned severe thunderstorms in houston thursday like i said it happened thursday all right, and it says causing at least four fatalities, which it actually is more. That's why the article says seven days, so it jumped up to seven. All right, and leaving more than one million customers without power across southeastern Texas. You see that? All right, and then uh, down here it says a line of severe thunderstorms swept through southeastern Texas and Louisiana. So Louisiana was hit too, but I guess the hardest was Texas. All right, Thursday says blasting the Houston area with incredible wind reaching up to 100 miles per hour. That's, whoo, that left at least seven dead, including a mother of a newborn. Wow, a mother, and then, no, and it says, and more than one million power uh, customers without electricity. It says the extreme wind gusts blew out windows of high-rise buildings. You see that? It caused transmission towers holding power lines to crumble. All right, and it says the National Weather Service in Houston called uh, the event a derecho, all right, which I, I brought out what that means, okay. And it says which produce produces destructive winds over hundreds of miles and impacts uh, and impacts millions of people, all right. So that's a heavy thing, man. All right, the heavenly Father, like I said, man, he is not playing. All right, so I got another uh, precept I want to pull out. All right, we're gonna go to the book of Isaiah chapter 29 and i'm going to read verse 6 all right let me get this pulled up okay this is isaiah 29 verse 6 and it says thou shalt be visited of the lord of hosts this is yahweh okay with thunder and with earthquake and with great noise and with storm and tempest and the flame of devouring fire all right and they were hit with that that lightning you know that lightning said it crumbled uh um, power lines and stuff all right which we're going to get a little bit more into that okay but in uh hey in the tempest the wind hey that's heavy all right so i got the word tempest uh the definition of tempest and it just says now it says a violent windstorm okay that's what they got hit with especially one with rain hail or snow it says a violent commotion disturbance or tumult hey tumult's heavy because didn't uh our enemies uh they uh do a ton they had a uh a tumult against us okay one of the curses uh it tells you in Deuteronomy is that he's going to put uh, the curses that were put on us will be put on our enemies okay you know some of our people just get crossed in the car crossfire but uh, most of the time it's usually two-thirds of our people all right they get they get uh judged all right so the heavenly father man is not uh not playing around all right this is why you gotta hearken into the men of Yahweh Shem Yahweh Shai, man. Okay. All right. So I got another article I want to go to. We're just gonna get a little bit more into this uh, power situation because without power, that means like uh, there goes your 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 nine one one. You won't you won't be able to call nine one one. You know, uh, your refrigerator. You know, your food's gonna spoil and go bad. Uh, you know your phones you won't be able to charge your phones up uh you know there's no internet so there goes you know if you're uh, if you're somebody that was trying to tune into the word okay all right so you know a lot of these things are gonna happen all right all right so uh again just give me a second to get this pulled up
all right and I'm, I'm going to the uh this article is the texas tribune all right and it says some houston area power outages could last weeks okay so hey this is not like something like oh your power be back on by the end of the night or the next day you know it says it could last weeks all right so again, it says some Houston area power outages could last weeks after deadly storm caused widespread damage. All right, it says at least four people were killed, which we know it risen up to seven, okay? And much of the state's largest city was brought to a standstill. Crews are racing to restore power and remove debris. All right, that's heavy, man, okay? And then see, it says power outages could last weeks in parts of Houston after thunderstorms with hurricane force winds tore through the city, it says an official said Friday, knocking out electricity to nearly one million homes and businesses. We are going to, we are going to have to talk about this disaster in weeks, not days. Uh, Harris County Judge Alina Hidalgo, okay, says the county's top elected officials said at news conference. Houston Mayor John Whitmore said four and possibly five people were killed, which we know is up to seven now. All right, after storms. Uh, Thursday swept through Harris County, which include Houston. Officials warned residents that it could, it would be a slow cleanup and that some residents should brace to be without electricity for days, if not longer. Okay, which uh, it's going to be, uh, it's going to be a lot longer than that. All right, which I got some information on that. All right, but I'm going to finish reading this and it says, uh, let's see. All right, if not longer, it says it was fierce, it was intense, it was quick, and most uh, Houstonians didn't have time to get themselves out of harm's way, Whitmore said. See, they weren't even prepared. Hey, man, what does it say about uh, Yahushua coming like a thief in the night? You know, hey, the Heavenly Father come just like that, man, and, and you ain't going to be ready, okay? So, uh, like I said, I got some information on, on that, but before I do, I want to pull up some more precepts. All right, so just give me a quick second. All right, get these pulled up. Cause they talking, uh, they're talking like uh, weeks, but uh, from what I'm hearing, it's gonna be, uh, it could be anywhere from two to four weeks. Four weeks, you might as well, that's a month. All right, imagine a month, people will go crazy. We had that, uh, when Katrina happened, we caught uh, part of that, that windstorm reached all the way up here to Indiana, all right? And uh, it was bad, man, and I remember it, it actually knocked the power out for people and they were without power for like two weeks, you know? And people's food went bad, people went, it was going crazy. You know, mine's happened to, it went out for a day and it came back on, you know? So like, uh, I allowed my grandmother and them to come over and that was a good memory I had with her because she was uh, battling uh, breast cancer and she ended up dying uh not so long ago uh, uh, not so long after that but she came up her she, her my grandfather and my uh, my young uncle you know i have a i have an uncle that's younger than me but uh they uh they all came over and they were charging their laptops their phones and stuff and while she came over she cooked a big dinner she made uh like i, I believe she made chili because with that hurricane it caused everything it was really cool it became cool around here so she uh made that uh chili man and that was it was good too man it was good to have that good home cooked meal you know, and it was just a good, uh, it was a good memory, man. You know, I have, you know, and that was like pretty much the last time I really had that good quality time with my grandmother, man, before she passed. All right. But uh, this is the book of Nahum, chapter one and verse three. And it says, the Lord, Yahweh is slow to anger, okay, and great in power and will not at all, okay, and will not at all acquit the wicked, okay. The Lord have his way in the whirlwind and in the storm. It says, and the clouds are the dust of his feet. Okay, so the Heavenly Father, and, and you know, a lot of times we use this precept regarding like the tornadoes and stuff. But you know, hey man, those these windstorms and all that. Hey man, the Heavenly Father, man, he's got many ways that he can get, get to you, man. Okay, these natural disasters, you know, it's not just some coincidence. Okay, even with these devils playing with the weather like they be doing, you know, that's all the Heavenly Father's doing. Remember, Esau is, the, is Yahweh's sword, okay? So, you know, this devil's going to do what a devil do, all right? That's why I always say, you know, hey, this devil's doing what, what he's supposed to be doing, being the devil, okay? We the children of the light, so we got to, uh, we got to represent, all right? That's why I try to go hard, man, all right? 
So I got the word anger, all right? And it says a strong feeling of annoyance, displeasure, or hostility, okay? You know, you got similar words like annoyance, vexation, okay? Indignation, okay? He got indignation with, with the Edomites, okay? Irritation, look, fury, wrath, outrage, temper, rage, resentment, road rage, <laughs> aggravation okay so these are just some some similar words man hey and the heavenly father is, is definitely vexed with these uh heathen all right in this place uh babylon the great you know all right so there's gonna be heavy judgment okay so i got another uh got another preset i'm gonna bring it real quick We're gonna to go to the book of we're gonna to go to the book of Psalms chapter 83 and verse 15. All right. Again, Psalms 83, verse 15 says, So persecute them with thy tempest. Okay. It's like a violent windstorm. That's pretty much what a tempest is, okay? And they got hit with that hundred miles per hour wind. Shoo! It's crazy. Alright. So persecute them with thy tempest. And make them afraid with thy storm, okay? Hey, the Heavenly Father is also known as the King of Terrors. He has many uh, aliases, okay? Nicknames, okay? He is the King of Terrors, all right? And, and him just hitting you with these natural disasters is one way, all right? He got to get your attention one way or another, all right? And our people just, you know, they ain't hearkening, they ain't listening, okay? The Heavenly Father, hey, you know, he's not playing, okay? So another thing, okay, so they're saying that uh, the power could be out for uh, two to four weeks, all right? In case anybody is wondering why the power is completely out in Houston, this is where the lightning struck and knocked this part of the power grid down. Look at how the metal is completely folded on this and how this is out. Wow. I just spoke to somebody from Center Point Energy and the news is here and they are saying that it could be possibly two to four weeks before the power is restored. They are flying in liners from around the country to come and try to repair the power grid. I was just at the grocery store in the area and they're saying to get food for your homes because the shelves are completely empty in the area. So find an area that has power and get to the store and get the things that you need, the essentials, the medicines and everything, because it's gonna be a couple of weeks before the power is restored in the Houston area. I mean, look at the damage that that lightning caused to completely bend the metal. I mean, look at this mess. Look at this, y'all. This is down the street from my house. I don't know if y'all can see, but the poles are laid down all the way. That way. And then going all the way down the line. All right, this is the book of Hebrews chapter 10 verse 31 and it says it is a fearful thing okay to fall into the hands of the living God okay so it's a fearful thing to fall into the hands of Yahweh by Shem Yahweh Shai all right and like I say and he's got his eyes set on this place so judgment is coming out okay all right but you know there's a good there's a good fear all right you know those that fear the Heavenly Father okay we don't fear man and things like that 
and you know and ultimately this is bringing fear on the people okay you know but they, they but it's not the fear that you thinking you know like like the fear of the heavenly father okay but we fear the heavenly father all right which he tells you this in proverbs 9 and 10 it says the fear of the lord is the beginning of wisdom you see that so in uh, us, us we're fit we fear the heavenly father we're, we're trying to do what's right we're trying to exercise these uh law statutes and commandments coming back to the heavenly father and when i'm talking about we as in the israelites okay his chosen people okay you so-called negroes hispanics and native americans we are the biblical israelites okay so us coming back to the heavenly father in, in, in fear in, in fear okay because we don't want to be judged okay this is the same god that flooded the whole earth okay only eight people survive you know if you don't fear him then uh i don't know man i don't know what to tell you you know that judgment man will come on you but again, Proverbs 9 and 10 says, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom and the knowledge of the holy is, under, is understanding. Okay, you have, you have, you understand. Okay, and you move accordingly. All right. I've noticed a thing uh, uh, like whenever storms be hitting, especially like in this region. Okay, it's usually nowhere in the vicinity like where I'm at. You know, uh, we had a bad storm one time. Like I said, uh, that one, that wind storm with the Katrina, you know, the wind. It knocked the power out here. My power like was only out for like like I said a day, if that, you know. And then it was back on. So the heavenly Father was keeping me, okay, you know. But everybody else was without power, okay. And then uh, another situation, we had a storm that was really bad, and it ended up flooding like downtown, like where I'm at now. All this stuff was like uh, almost underwater, pretty much. It was it was all flooded. It was a real bad rainstorm. Like that rain came down, uh, and, and places were flooded. You know, it was up to your uh, knees. You know, some some it was up to your waist or whatever. All right, but it usually got up to about your knees or so. It was a lot of water. All right, but uh, where I was at, everything was fine. You know, and then um, you know, here recently we got hit with tornadoes. You know, locally, but it was on the other side of the city I'm in. You know, so it just shows you that the heavenly Father man will keep you, man. Okay, not saying that stuff won't happen where I'm at, but the Heavenly Father will keep you and keep you protected. Okay, you know, he, he's, um, you know, putting that protection over his elect. Okay, not saying that I am the elect, you know, I'm a hopeful elect, you know, Lord willing, I'm of that number, you know, so, uh, and I, when I say number, I'm talking about the one third, you know, I we ain't even gonna go into the 144, you know, but that would be, it, it'd be something, you know, if that uh, happens. But yes, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom and the knowledge of the holy is understanding, okay? It's a blessing to be able to be part of this wise counsel and understand these scriptures and the things in these times and, and move accordingly. Like you've seen those uh, those videos so far that I've showed, like, like the one with the power outage and stuff. And now, like I said, they're going to be out maybe two to, um, uh, two to uh, four weeks, which that's uh, about a month. You know, when I lived in Puerto Rico, we were hit with a hurricane and it, uh, you know, two to four weeks is, 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 is nothing uh, to what I, I've went through. You know, try three months, you know, try, imagine being without power for three, three months. Okay. When I lived in Puerto Rico, that's what happened. We got hit with a hurricane and, you know, the response team, you know, uh, fixing up the electric, uh, your electricity, you know, it takes a lot longer. We didn't have that help. And you know Esau and them not gonna come come down there, you know. And I think Esau was mad because Esau wanted to make Puerto Rico actually a, the 51st state, and, and there was a vote thing going on there, and most of the people voted no, they didn't want it, you know. They 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 knew in their heart they didn't trust Esau. However, at the end of the day, you know, but it's still a U.S. territory. You're using U.S. currency. The the currency there is the U.S. dollar, you know. It's a U.S. territory, but it's just not. Um, they're not a state, uh, you know, and they didn't want that. They was like, oh no, you know. But you, but look at look at uh, when things happen, like natural disasters and stuff, and they be looking for help. He saw uh, when uh, Trump went down there, what he do? They said he shot a, he was throwing a paper uh, paper towel at people. <laughs> he came with with paper towel, man. They like, huh, man? We need supplies and everything, and this man came with paper towel, you know? Hey. You know, which that, that, that makes me, that thinks of a precept here real quick. All right. Uh, before we get into the rest of this. Let's see. This is the book of Lamentations, chapter 4, and verse 17. It says, as for us, our eyes 
our eyes as yet fell for our vain help. See, in our watching, we have watched for a nation that could not save us. All right. And ultimately, you know, uh, the uh, Babylon is at odds with the state of Texas anyways, too. There's a big resistance going on with the state of Texas. And you notice that that state has been getting hit uh, with all kinds of uh, natural disasters and things like that, man. You know, th this one uh, here recently, but, you know, they've been hit. Uh, and then uh, the bridge, they just had a bridge. I think it's Galveston, Texas, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, another barge done hit a bridge down there. All right. You know, it's just, it's, it's ongoing, man. There's so much happening. All right. But back on this power situation, like I said, that's, that's heavy, man. And it's going to do, uh, that's going to affect a lot of people. They said there's millions without power. So that's going to be, that's millions, man you know, affected by food and stuff like that, all right? But uh, as far as the, the lights being out, this is the book of Job, chapter 18. I'm gonna start at verse five, and it says, yea, the light of the wicked shall be put out, and the spark of his fire shall not shine, okay? Verse six, it says, the light shall be dark in his tabernacle, and his candle shall be put out with him, okay? So, you know, you know that that's pretty much, a hey, the heavenly father, uh, you know, hitting that light switch, man. Or he going to the breaker and he hitting that man and 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 taking their lights, their lights out, man. You know this place is done for, man. Babylon has walked in great pride, you know, as I read earlier in Second Ezra, the fifteenth chapter. You know, uh, they have walked in great pride, and the heavenly Father don't like pride, man. He hates pride. You know, so this place is is through, man. You're gonna see more and more judgment and places and things like this happening. This is why you got to hearken into his men that are set up in these last days. You know, we come out here. This is not for entertainment. We don't doing this for uh, likes, views. Uh, we ain't even doing it for subscribers, man. We're just doing it. We're doing it to edify our people, but making our call and election sure at the same time, man. Because, uh, you know, we also are watchmen, you know. You know, we're commanded to come out here and watch. So that's why we're called out, you know, and we do this. And uh, let you know the times we are in and what's going on. Okay, which I could bring out that preset. All right, all right. This is Ezekiel chapter three, which I usually bring this out when I do my current events uh, lessons. Okay, but this is Ezekiel chapter three, starting at verse seventeen. It says, "Son of man, I have made thee a watchman unto the house of Israel. Therefore, hear the words at my mouth and give them warning from me." So we're supposed to come out here and be commanded, and, and we're giving warning. Okay, that the Heavenly Father is uh, is upset. He's pissed off with this place. Okay, and judgment's coming. But you don't want to be part of that. Okay, that's why I always break out the scripture, like, you know, when I, especially regarding the church and, or just dealing with the wine, the Babylonian wine, come out of her, my people. Okay, that you not be partakers of her, uh, her uh, plagues, you know, her destruction. Okay, that's going to come upon this place. You don't want to go down with this place. Okay, but yeah. Uh, son of man, I have made thee a watchman unto the house of Israel. Therefore, hear the words, uh, hear the word at my mouth, and give them warning from me. Okay, when I say unto the wicked, thou shalt surely die, and thou givest him not warning. So if I decided to just, I'm not going to do this video. I'm going to stay home and chill. You know, uh, you know, watch a basketball game or play video games or something. You know, and not be doing this. Which there's judgment for that too. That's a whole nother lesson. You know, you can be judged for that. All right, but. Uh, if I was deciding to do that, okay, that's a penalty for that, all right? When I say unto the wicked, thou shalt surely die, and thou givest him not warning, nor speaketh to warn the wicked from his wicked way. You see that? To save his life, because us doing this is saving your life, all right? The same wicked man shall die in his iniquity, so that man will die, but his blood will I require at thy hand, okay? So the Heavenly Father is going to, uh, he's going to come for you, all right? All right? Verse 19, yet if thou warn the wicked and he turn not from his wicked wickedness, nor from his wicked way, he shall surely die in his iniquity, but thou hast delivered thy soul. Okay, so we trying to save, I'm trying to save my soul too, man. So me warning you is saving me at the same time as saving you. Okay, if you hearken. But if not, then hey, I'll shake the dust off my feet. You know, which that's in the scriptures too, and you keep it moving. You know, but I'm going to, uh, I'm trying to save my soul as well. You know, because hey, I want to get out of this thing. All right. So uh, there was it was a lot more that was being said too, man. Uh, they were talking about the, the stores, uh, get the food while I can because things are getting empty. Okay. 
All right, so we're gonna see if there's any uh, articles on uh, store shelves. Alright, so I don't see any articles regarding it, but that but from what they were seeing from the video is that uh they were telling people to get the food, get your food while while you know you can now because they're saying that uh the store shelves were beginning empty, which we know that it more than likely that's probably what's taking place. Now this devil's not putting it out there on the news because they don't want people to panic. But meanwhile, we know that's what people do. You know, that's the first thing they're gonna try to do is uh is get their uh, get their supplies, and a lot of times they go into hoarding. Okay, you saw what they did with the toilet paper, all right. But uh, I got a couple of precepts regarding this. All right, we're gonna go to Second Ezra, chapter sixteen, and verse twenty-one. It says, "Behold, victuals shall be so good, so good, cheap upon earth that they shall think themselves to be in good case." So a lot of times they'll be getting these things and think, "Oh, I'm good, I'm good, I'm stocking up. You know, I got a little money, I can get all this. I'm good." Okay. All right, so they'll think themselves to be a good case. And even then shall evils grow upon the earth, okay? Because when all this is happening, crime is gonna go up. When, when people's food start going bad, it tells you in 2nd Ezra, the 15th chapter, that how people will begin to invade one another, okay? Because of the lack of bread, okay? That's, that's Jacob's trouble, man, okay? So imagine this on a nationwide scale, all right? People, people uh, like I said, you know, this is, we're not talking a couple days or so. We're talking uh, anywhere from two weeks to four weeks. Imagine a whole month, man, without electricity. Okay, you, all your food gone bad. So you you know you need to have non-perishable food. But a lot of times people are not going to buy that that type of food. All right. And plus the stuff that this man sells in his stores, anyways, is a, a lot of it's genetically modified. So you, you you if you do go in there, but you know they don't care. They're going to go and buy all that stuff. And that stuff is doing more harm than good anyways so even when you go buy food you're buying the foul food you know the uh, messing up your body all right so again it says behold victuals shall be so good cheap upon the earth that they shall think themselves to be a good case and even then shall evils grow upon the earth okay sword famine and great confusion all right uh what uh what it say over in isaiah trusting in uh in uh in egypt and in Pharaoh, what is that going to be? Your shame and your confusion. Okay? Isaiah, uh, the 30th chapter. Okay? Third verse. Okay? Trusting in, in, in Egypt. Okay? Which, this place is spiritual Egypt. So trusting in Egypt, man, it's going to get you caught up. All right? They'll tell you, oh, everything's okay. Everything's going to be all right. The stores are stocked and fine. But meanwhile, things are being snatched up. And you're going to get in there and you're going to be looking. Okay, that's why some people might tell you, hey, you better go hey, get what you need and, and, and get on, you know, the type of supplies. You know, like in, in that case, you know, where they're at now, you know, probably having a generator, maybe some batteries or something like that, you know. Uh, and there's ways that you can try to charge your phone, you know, uh, without, uh, you know, plugging it into a wall. There's other ways as well, but you want to make sure, but this storm, came, they said it came out of nowhere, like it just, popped up as you've seen in that video clip earlier you know but still you know you want to always try to have your devices and things uh charged up okay so because you know you might not be knowing what's going on you know uh and it's, it's gonna get crazy but hey ultimately this place is gonna be shut down you know we don't know if it's an emp tech or whatever but you know uh however you know you ain't gonna even have to, that ain't gonna be a concern you know but you know, you want to have like uh, maybe some matches, candles, and things. You know, hey, man, 
is at least try to be prepared, but you don't need to be hoarding though, all right? Because that, that, that's greed, all right? So I read this again, it says, Behold, victuals shall be so good, cheap upon the earth, that they shall think themselves to be in good case. Oh, everything's all good, all right? And even then shall evils grow upon the earth, sword, famine, okay? Because your food, like I said, your food's spoiling, and great confusion, okay? So that's what you're going to be seeing, all right? And like I said, we were talking about this, uh, these store shelves, all right? So we're going to go to, uh, like I said, there's a lot of second Ezra's, all right? I like Second Ezra's. Actually, I like both books. You know, First and Second Ezra's. All right. Ezra, uh, he seen, um, he seen the them having war with Yahweh Shai. He seen the crowning and all that. Like he had those those visions and stuff. That's powerful, man. That's powerful. Just imagine seeing that, man. That that's, man. All right, so this is 2nd Ezra, the 6th chapter, and I'm going to start at the 22nd verse, and it says, And suddenly shall the sown places appear unsown, okay? The full storehouses shall suddenly be found empty, and this is in the scriptures, okay? Your pastor's not bringing out these, because, you know, they don't uh, regard, they don't read from the Apocrypha, okay? Which this is, it's, it tells you authorized King James uh, version, okay? So this is part of the Bible, man. You go and you get the uh, original, the uh, King James 1611 edition, and all the books in the Apocrypha are in there, okay? They took it out because they, they've been pushing their lies, okay? And, and it, it exposes them, okay? You know, a lot of the Roman Empire and stuff is mentioned in here, okay? Alexander the Great, who they always portray as a hero and stuff, which he's one of their heroes, but he was a villain, he was a wicked man, and he's mentioned in the Bible. Okay, so they want to hide that history, so they can't have that sitting in the Bible. All right, so again it says, and suddenly shall the sown places appear unsown; the full storehouses shall suddenly be found empty. All right, verse twenty-three, and the trumpet shall give a sound, which when every man heareth, uh, they shall uh, be suddenly afraid. So people are going to be in fear of these things. Okay, you know, uh, and they're going to go crazy. But see us. You know, uh, we, we fear the Heavenly Father, so we're dwelling in wisdom and understanding. We concerning the times, we measure the times as the scripture says, all right? So when you measure in the times and you know the times you're in, you're gonna be calm, cool, and collective, man, because the Heavenly Father is a sense of peace in you, man, with this word, the Holy Spirit, all right? But you're gonna be like others. Now the Bible says don't follow the multitude to do evil, all right? And they're gonna go crazy, you know, because they don't know what's going on. They don't have, Yahabashim Yahushai dwelling in them. Alright? So again, it says, And the trumpet shall give a sound, which when every man heareth, they shall be suddenly afraid. Alright? So, uh, get the word afraid real quick. Alright, this is the word, I got the word afraid pulled up, and it just says, Feeling fear or, or anxiety, frightened. Okay? Uh, terrified, fearful, petrified, nervous, scared to death, <laughs> alarmed, intimidated by, uneasy, tense, worried, okay, uh, terror struck, horror stricken, uh, frant frantic, okay, scared, witless, all right, uh, faint hearted, okay, uh, so cowering, okay, uh, let's see, jittery, jumpy. Spooked, <laughs> yeah, they're gonna be spooked, man. All right, so those, those are just some of the similar words, man. Hey, the Heavenly Father, man, is uh definitely gonna uh he's gonna be judging this place, man. You know, because one of the things about it is, like I said, walking in great pride, cities will be destroyed by the Heavenly Father. All right, as I said earlier, uh, we're gonna get a, a little bit into this famine. All right. All right, this is Psalms 107, verse 34 says, a fruitful land into barrenness, okay? You know what being made bare, bare, like naked, okay? All right, a fruitful land into barrenness for the wicked of them that dwell therein, okay? All the wicked that's been done in here, this place is now being stripped, okay? The Heavenly Father went through there, you've seen all that damage, all right? 
So, you know, the Heavenly Father is, is definitely, uh, you know, and that's just kind of like, in a way, synonymous with, with the famine. Hey, you know, it's spoken also in uh, Matthew, the 24th chapter, the uh, seventh verse, that there will be famines in the last days. Okay? I read it earlier also in the precept, you know, that it's going to be famines. All right? You know, this is why you got to hearken to the Heavenly Father, man. So people are going to be hungry. All right? This is a... Uh, Lamentations 4 and 9, it says, they that be slain with the sword are better, okay? So those that are taken out by weaponry, okay, is better, okay? Uh, all right, it says, they that be slain with, with the sword are better than they that be slain with hunger, okay? So it's better to, to die by the sword, okay, than, uh, than starvation, okay? All right, for these pine away stricken through for the want of the fruits of the field. You see that? You know, like the land being turned into uh, barrenness, all right? And, and you're hungry, you know, you want food and now you're not able to get that, man. You know, like I said, and, and a lot of their food is gonna go bad, you know, because most people might have food that's uh, uh, that's not non-perishable. So they're gonna be looking, all right? So that's a heavy thing, all right? Like I said, the Bible, it, all throughout, there's all countless precepts on, on family, all right? So, uh, Lucky y'all, there's a squirrel around here. I was trying to watch it. I ain't got no food or nothing on me. But yeah, he was. I don't know if he came around looking, like he was hoping some food or something was around here. All right. But yeah, he's walking. He's going back and forth. Look at him. <laughs> All right. But this is Second Ezra 16 and verse 18. This is the beginning of sorrows. Okay, you see that? All right. And great mornings. Okay, the beginning of famine and great death. All right, so you hear that, there's that word famine again. Okay, the beginning of wars, all right, and the power shall be shall stand in fear, the beginning of evils. What shall I do when these evils shall come? Okay, and for us, you know, as Israelites, we got to hearken unto Yahweh Bashim Yahweh We're coming back to the Heavenly Father in these last days, okay? You know, uh, you know, seeking out uh, the Heavenly Father, these law, statutes, and commandments, we're keeping them to the best of our abilities. Okay, we know we're in Babylon. Okay, so, you know, you got to put that effort, exercise the righteous acts, okay? You know, uh, you men, gird up the loins, okay? You ladies, you know, be modest, okay? Uh, enough good conversation, keepers of the house, all right? Being obedient to your husbands. If you don't have a husband, just, you know, learning from, from the uh, brothers, okay? Taking notes and, and stuff and, and working on yourself, okay? Maybe this time, the reason you're by yourself is the Heavenly Father working on you to prepare you, okay? To be that to be that righteous woman like our, our righteous foremothers okay so that you can be prepared for a man for a man of the lord okay you know some of us need this time to work on ourselves okay because some of us right now if we really look at ourselves we might not be uh, husband material and some of the women might not be wife material okay so the heavenly father got to work on you in this time all right but we got to be seeking the heavenly father in these last days man okay this is what you got to do when all these evils come because you don't want to be succumbed to these things all right so that's a, a heavy thing all right There's a lot of people out here sometimes you get some jakes out here you know this is a chief place of concourse but you know you see a lot of Edomites, but you see Jake too, because Jake Jake be out and about. And there's a barbershop, uh, like uh, two businesses down. So uh, there's a lot of Jakes that come through here, you know. So that's why, you know, I, and this is like the perfect spot to position yourself to teach. You're not uh, in front of nobody's business to where they get mad and tell you you got to move or call the police. And a lot of stuff, and you're right here, so people people go by, you know. And there's different businesses. So it's uh, like I said, there's a barbershop and two businesses down. So they could uh, come by and they see a Jake out here teaching and they can inquire. All right. All right, but this is the book of Amos. All right. Behold, the eyes of the Lord God Yahweh are upon the simple kingdom. That simple kingdom is this place, America, Babylon the Great. All right. And it says, uh, and I will destroy it from off the face of the earth, saving. That I will not utterly destroy, all right, the house of Jacob, saith the Lord. And that that uh, who he's not going to destroy is the elect, all right. The two thirds of our people are going to uh, go down with this place, okay? They're going to be destroyed, 
all right? But that one third, the elect, all right, they're gonna be saved, okay? And that's why we're doing our, making our calling election sure so that we be part of that precious number, all right? So that's a beautiful thing, all right? Scary for the uh, two thirds, but hey, for us, man, Lord willing, man, you know, we make it, okay? So, uh, you know, the Heavenly Father's got his eyes set on this place, all right? This is, uh, and that's, we break these precepts up to show you, to warn you. All right, I got uh, another precept, and I guess I can end it on this one. All right. I'm trying to drag it out. All right. Because, see, what the Heavenly Father's doing is, you know, making that separation too you know you got to separate the uh, sheep from the goats all right you don't want to be no goat I shared a video clip on my Instagram of this uh, goat man making these weird funny noises which you know sheep don't do that man that's crazy but uh, them goats they be looking crazy you know I like goats though but you know it's separate you know it's a spiritual sense you know you got to make that separation you know all right so you want to be on the winning team Okay, the winning team is Yahweh Bashimi Shai, the holy angels, the elect. You want to be part of that. You know, you don't want to be the two thirds going down with Esau, Edom, the devil, the deceiver, okay, the border of wickedness, all right, and be cast off into that lake of fire. You don't want to go there, all right. You know, but it, when you don't trust in the heavenly father and you're not putting your trust now, or you scoffing, I get a lot of scoffers on a regular, and a, and a lot of times like, more and more are starting to pop up. Okay, some of them are uh, of these other nations, but some of them are uh, are Jake. Okay, scoffing. All right. So, hey, this that judgment you see in Houston that can come your way. You know, nobody is exempt from judgment, man. Okay, but those that are trying to seek out the heavenly Father, man, He'll have mercy on them, in compassion. Okay, but if you are scoffing at His men that are trying to edify His people, this judgment can come to you. All right. This is Isaiah 65, uh, starting at verse 13. It says, Therefore thus saith the Lord God, Behold, my servant shall eat. So while this power outages and these things are happening, you know, and people are going to start going hungry and, and, and food spoiling and everything, his elect are going to eat, his servants, all right, which are his elect, all right? All right, behold, my servant shall eat, but ye shall be hungry. See, you're going to be hungry. Behold, my servant shall drink, okay? So we're going to drink, all right? All right, but ye shall be thirsty. You see that? Behold, my servants shall rejoice. Because see, we're rejoicing in Yahweh Shemiah Shah on everything. You know, when, when he has mercy on us, the blessings, you know, just everything, you know, our health, you know, keeping us in good health, you know, and healing us and stuff. Rejoicing, rejoicing. Even when people come up against us, we rejoice, man. You know, the Bible tells you to do that. Leap for joy when people come up against you or they remove themselves from your company. You know, that's what I do, okay? All right, he says, my servants shall rejoice, but ye shall be ashamed. You're gonna be ashamed, okay? Power, power outage, man, for two to four weeks? That's judgment, all right? Verse 14, behold, my servants shall sing for joy, of the, uh, for joy of heart, but ye shall cry for sorrow of heart and shall howl for vexation of spirit. So you see that? That's going to be the judgment, man. Again, it's a fearful thing to fall into the hands of Yahweh Shemi Shai. So if you are an Israelite, you so-called Negroes, Hispanics, and Native Americans, you better come back to the Heavenly Father these last days before it's too late because he's going to cast his judgment upon this place. All right? So with that, Lord willing, you found this highways and hedges edifying. Okay? All right? I want to give all honor, all glory, and all praise unto Yahweh Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem Rakakwadash. Double honors to the elders of the nation of Israel. And Shalom to you brothers and sisters out there. Till the next one, Shalom.